Hello, my name is Bryce Green. Welcome to my ASL vlog. Hey guys, I'm Bryce Green. Welcome back to my ASL vlog. On today's episode, we have a very special guest. His name is Luke Bundrum. Luke is a full-time student here at the University of Georgia. He drives buses on campus. He teaches ASL classes for beginners. And he started ASL Dogs, which is an organization centered around sign language and deaf culture. He somehow still manages to have a social life. Oh, and I almost forgot, Luke is deaf. Later on in this episode, we'll interview Luke. Um, we had a lot of fun doing the interview, but we also, we got into some things. Um, we discussed what it was like growing up deaf in a hearing world, what it was like being the only deaf person in his family, um, stereotypes that he's encountered um, over the years, what else did we talk about? We talked about his cochlear implant and whether or not he agrees with his parents' choice to implant him. Um, yeah, so at the end of the interview, he told a joke. He, I'm a little hurt about it still um, because I was the butt end of that joke, but it was a good time. I hope you enjoy. Um, please be sure to stick around until the end and as always let me know what you think in the comment if you like what you saw if you have any ideas of different things that you may want to see in the future please let me know thanks Hey guys, I'm Bryce Green. Welcome back to my ASL vlog. I'm here with Luke. Hey Luke. Hello. How are you? Good? Nah, fantastic. Okay, good. I'm good. Okay. What's your name sign? My name's uh, Luke Fingerspell. What's my name sign? Luke? Yeah. Why like this? I think my mom, when I was growing up, yeah, my mom was always looking for me with Luke, with Luke in the end, and L to the warrior sign. So I should pick the nine. And now I tend to like wander around. Everybody wondering where Luke is, where Luke. So it's funny, but that's me. Always looking, looking, Luke. Yeah, they all need me. <laughs> okay. But anyway, I'm popular, I guess, now. I don't know. Okay, I know you're really involved in the community. What all do you do? Um, the deaf community, I do a lot of things. First of all, I'm with the Baptist Collegiate Ministries, BCM. I work with the deaf ministry, and I coordinate all the events, socials, and all of that. Second, I'm with ASL Dog. I'm the president, kind of another social club. And the third, I work as well, the bus driver, UGA. I'm also on paint line, and I, uh, you know, hang out with family and friends. Whoa. Yeah. I'm busy. What's ASL Dogs? Can you tell me more? That's a social club where we teach ASL 
with fun activities, games. It's more of a chill club, not like a TG grading uh, type of format. It's more of a fun time. That people could be part of it and a lot of fun. How do you have time for all of that? I don't know. I just, you know, plan my schedule really well. Make sure I have time for everything. I need to have some time for myself, but I need to sleep, you know. But anyway. What do you do for fun? Uh, I don't really don't go outside a lot because I'm always outside, so I like staying inside. Uh, enjoy myself, watch Netflix, Hulu, hang out with my girlfriend and other friends. Okay. Maybe once in a while, I'll go outside and play, but, you know. That sounds yeah, fun. Well, I'm, I'm enjoying myself, so. Okay, so, you drive buses. What's it like? Well, um, it's a good job, but it's a little bit shallow because I have to be able to rely on hearing with the radio, communicate with other drivers, and the dispatcher. So I'm always, you know, using the radio. Um, they help me a lot because they give me a portable radio that's more amplified so I can hear it better. Not on the bus radio because every bus have a radio, but it's not always clear or very loud. So I'm like, eh. Do I have more that's more reliable? Do I hear better? And more control over it? And I drive just fine, no problem. I can drive. I got a CDL for that. I would train for like six, seven months. Train and then finish. And then I'm driving on my own, working, get paid. Some hearing people may think that someone who's deaf can't drive a bus. What would you tell them? I would say that people can do anything. If it's their problem to be deaf, it's not my problem, your problem. So I work for you, and if you can help me, I will work. They were willing to help me, so that was good for me. When you work with deaf people, you have to like make accommodations, uh, help each other around. Can't should not be shut them because they shit can't hear. I don't know if fully deaf. I don't know if they're able to work because they have to listen to the radio. I mean, that part of the job. So I'm lucky I get here with the cochlear implant. UGA. Didn't see it as a liability. No, they don't see me as a liability. What's the most shocking stereotype you've ever encountered from hearing people? Me a stereotype? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Wait. Is there a better sign? Stereotype. Oh, standard stuff like that. But anyway, um. I guess the most popular stereotype that deaf people have is they can't work because they you have to be able to hear, but not too because. There's a lot of jobs that don't require active listening. Doesn't require a lot of, um, yeah, active listening. People think that they can't work because they're here. It's not true because I'm work. I drive. I'm a deaf. Other people work as a teacher. Other people work as a chef. Computer engineering, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, deaf people can work. Same as hearing people. Yeah, just the same as hearing people. It's no difference. Some jobs can't because require active listening. It's not best job, but I want. Generally, everyone can, yes. Okay.
Is your family deaf or hearing? My family's hearing. Which? hearing. I'm okay. the only deaf. What was that like? I don't know why. I mean, I don't know why I'm deaf. I have no shenanigans. I just happened to be born with deafness. So, it's hard because all my family's hearing, and yes, most of them, most of them sign, know how to talk to me, but it's a struggle for me because we have family get together and have a hard time understanding. So I just tend to eat and then just, you know, be on my own. Because that, I tend to be more independent. I tend to be independent. Me, be independent, not so bad. I should observe and watch things. I mean, I want to be involved, but, you know. So, some people in your family sign? Yeah, some people in my family sign. My mom, my cousin, siblings. Some of them know a little bit, but mostly no. Okay. Do you prefer signing or communicating? Reading or orally. orally. I prefer signing so I can understand everything, but I'm new to all methods, so I'm fine with that. But I prefer signing, yes. Okay. Your family, do they want you to grow up communicating orally? Right? Well, my parents wanted me to be able to communicate in both worlds. Both. And I went to sign, a little sign, I went to speech therapy, I got like both, best of both worlds, so to speak, theory and, theory and deaf world, into one. Do you agree with those choices? Do you agree with those choices? Yeah. How did it feel growing up in a hearing world? Um, it's a lot harder, more of a different life experience, because most of the people are hearing, and not all of them know signs, so a little challenging trying to communicate and understand what's going on. But it's not as bad. Not as much of a struggle. But I just keep learning how to accommodate with the world and how to get around things. After you graduate, what are you going to do? I don't know yet. I have a lot of different options for me. One is peace to death or be a missionary for the deaf, travel, or be a pastor for the deaf, or work in the collegiate ministry, or work as a bus driver the full time. I don't know. I have a really society yet. I'm still wondering. I don't know. Are you a first year? Are you second? I'm a senior. Senior. Okay. Me too. Cool. Well, this is my fifth year, but... I'm a fourth year senior, yeah. You use a cochlear implant. Yeah, see, yeah, a cochlear implant. Do you like it? I can hear everything, you know, but sometimes I don't know if it's actually hearing or artificial hearing, but I'm able to hear, decide what that means, interpret the sound, what it sounds like, what it means, I'm like, oh, okay, that's what that is, or what that, what that sound is. Um, I feel like I can participate in the world by hearing. It's a good benefit to have. How old were you? I was three years old when I got my cochlear implant. Do you ever take it off? I can take it off when I sleep or if I'm tired of listening. <laughs> like, ah, oh, I don't want to hear you anymore. Peach. Peach. You know. Okay. Anyway. Do you read lips? No, um, I don't lip read. I can, but it's not. I don't use that method much. It's harder and everyone lips different. 
and if I know the person and I'm used to their voice and the mouth, I'm I'll be okay. But a new person, I'm like, oh, I don't know, go over my head. How many hearing people think that all deaf people read lips? A lot of them, yeah. But it's not true. No, it's not true. It's wrong. What was your biggest challenge of being deaf? Um, trying to understand people, lecture, they don't interpret it, or concert, or a speech, or a TV, a TV show with no captioning. I'm like, I don't know what they're saying. How do you deal with that? I should try to find interpreter or script or something or ask someone to help me. Or I should don't go, I should don't put it to pain there. In all of your classes, you always have an interpreter? I have class okay. all my interpreter, yes. At the BCM you teach ASL to new students. What's that like? It's a lot of fun to teach. Teach new people, learn ASL. I'm always excited to get more people from the deaf community if they don't know ASL. Uh, if you don't know ASL, it's kind of hard to be part of the deaf community. If you know ASL, you're part of the deaf community. So it's a lot of fun to teach and usually slow process. Okay? It's a new language. And you have a lot of good practice, you have to get used to it, taking all the information, you know, the grammar, vocab, and all of that. It's a long process, but it's good. Your church has an interpreter? For the preacher? Preacher, yeah. Uh, my friend interprets for me. Uh, they don't, they don't, how I want you to volunteer to interpret. What advice do you have for new ASL students? I think they go meet deaf people or hang out with them because they know ASL is better way to learn and watch signs and learn from them and then help each other. If you don't know other deaf people, what do you do? Go to ASL classes, social, or look at online sources with different way to learn. Okay. Do you have a favorite sign? Um, I like shock, surprise, wow, amazement. What does that mean? Be surprised, amazed, wow, cool. Okay. What's the sign for a joke like this? Can you tell me a joke in ASL? You know, ASL pun. That's fine. There's a lot of good jokes with that. You know what this is? You know what that means? Mm. Hangman? No. You know what this is? Stand. Upside down. Yeah, upside down. Stand upside down. Under. Under. Underneath. Under. Under. Understand. Oh, understand. Yes. yes. Understand okay, now. understand now. Yeah, understand okay. that. Let's go, dog. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. No problem, I'm joy. Thank you for letting me out. Bye. Go, dog. Woo, woo, woo. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe below because it's the quickest, easiest way to become a signature signer. Illy.